Hello, welcome back to the debate in Manchester United's win over PSG in Paris in the Champions League. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, in many ways his, his hand was forced in terms of bringing mm -hmm. a lot of teenagers into the squad. But it was the substitution yeah. that he made, particularly at a stage in the game where Manchester United needed to score. This wasn't a run out mm. in a game in which they were, they were dominating and they were running away yeah. with it. This was a bringing them on in a game in which there were, there were serious issues at, yeah. at, you know, at the stake. Yeah, I think a lot of people have said, you know, well, he's had to put him on bench because he's had 10 injuries. OK, you, you, you'd find it difficult to disagree with that. He didn't have to bring them on, though. You know, I think there's a number of managers that probably would have said, oh, well, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, I'm going to put Rojo on at centre-back and I'm going to put Chris Simone as a centre-forward and then we're just going to knock the ball up to him. But they decided not to do that, you know, and let's not forget he's given debuts to, to Chong, uh, to Greenwood and to Garner. What I love about Solskjaer, the way he's going about it, he's bigging them up in the press, in the media. When he speaks about Garner, he's a young Michael Carrick. You know, when he talks about Chong, he'll get the ball and he will run at the opposition. Greenwood's, he, he's been absolutely phenomenal at the, the younger ages. Um, you've also got Gomez as well. So he's not afraid to, to bring these youngsters in. And, you know, he joined the club when he was 23. And, you know, he saw players, the class of 92. You know, let's not forget the likes of Neville, Giggs, you know, 17 years of age. Um, Phil Neville, David Beckham, Nicky Butt, Paul Scholes. You know, they were all making their debuts there. And Solskjaer was then there within that time. And he seems to have a really good relationship with, with, the, with the manager, Sir Alex Ferguson. And he saw all that. He called him gaffer in his post-match interview. It's the, it's, it's, it's the respect. It's a respect thing. I think it's something that a lot of players do when they see their own managers, which, which is, you know, the ultimate respect. And, and he's the, the best manager, arguably one of the best ever, best ever managers. But you can see the influence from Sir Alex Ferguson. You can see the influence from Mike Phelan. Um, the rest of the, the coaching staff behind the scenes. And he's not afraid to play youngsters. That's what Manchester United have, have been bred on. You know, you go all the way back to uh, the Busby Babes, you know, the, that tragic um, accident in, in 58. And you, you go from there, the amount of young players that have come through. And it, it's something that United love. And Solskjaer is, is part of the United fabric and he knows what the club's all about. And it's been, it's been wonderful to see what he's done. Um, I've heard so many people say it was an easy job, anybody could do that. Absolutely no chance. 14 out of 17 yeah. wins. I mean, it's the manner of the win. How many managers in the halfway point of the first half takes out their right back, put in a youngster at right back, correct decision. Then second half, when they, just after the disallowed goal for PSG, changes the formation, goes to a 5-4-1, allows PSG to have the ball, brings young players on as you've mentioned before, mm. that can carry the ball up the pitch. And it was a calculated, organised, or no, fabulous plan by the manager to get the team to that point in the game, regardless of the decision. I think it was, it was <clears throat> very well thought out yesterday. What, what I really like about watching this United team is that it's a collective. You know, at, at times, he's brought an identity back to the football club. I think at times earlier on in the season, you know, I wanted Mourinho to do really well. I was really excited when he came to the football club, but it looked as though it was a lot of individuals playing in the team. Now you're hearing, hearing Lukaku building up a really good understanding, really good relationship with Rashford, you know, the way they're going forward. Now they defend as a unit, they go forward as a unit. But Solskjaer's gone in, you can tell obviously Pogba didn't play last night. He's put his arm around Pogba's shoulder and he said, I'll, I'll build this team around you. You go out, do what you can do, express yourself. Solskjaer's been there as a reserve team manager for a number of years um, before he went away to go and manage himself. And he's got them playing on the front foot. He's got them playing with a smile it's the on the face. the number of ways as mm. well. You know, you don't know how he's going to set his team up. Is it a diamond in midfield? Started out with a flat four and two strikers yesterday, but in very low blocks. I mean, he does what he has to do to win games. And I think the team behind him deserves yeah. a lot of credit for that. I, I when, think... Go on, oh, sorry. No, I, think, I was just going to say, when he, was, when he was asked about bringing those, those young players into the squad... He, he, as you said, he was completely unfazed by it. He said, well, we've got the young players, we've got a really good academy, and I trust them to be able to, to make the step up. But then they come on to the pit. It's one thing, as you are saying, to have them in the squad. It's another thing altogether to bring them out yeah, onto the pitch got in a that clear pressure role. situation. Yeah, but, but if they've got a clear role, then I think that makes it easier. If you, if you're but does he job... gain from it as well, as a manager, absolutely. having those players who've got that experience? Yeah, absolutely. But if, you, if you're saying to your youngster, if it, 10 minutes to go, we're in the game... I want you to come onto the pitch and do X, Y and Z. That player goes into their confident, clear, and for the manager, giving somebody a specific role like that, it was, it was so obvious watching it that it was every step of the way yesterday was well thought out. And you heard players and the manager alike say after the game, they had a feeling about it. 
They knew that they were going to be successful there. You don't know what the result's going to be, but you know if you're in a position to perform. And I think Manchester United went in there like a Manchester United team of old, more so than at any other point for me, because, and differently to the Juventus game, because the stakes were so high last night. And they did it under tremendous pressure with arguably a weakened squad. And they did it, and they came through that with shining colours. I think the, the collective as well. So if you go back to the Crystal Palace game, they won uh, recently away when they won 3-1. Garner comes on, makes, makes his debut. Young player, only 17 years of age. The smile on the coaches' faces before they eat, before he even steps foot on the pitch. They can't wait to get him on the pitch. That, that has been the United way for so long. And when you look at Van Gaal, the previous, ma uh, previous managers, you look at Mourinho, more often than not, he was on the touchline. He was making these decisions individually himself. You look at, you, you look at the dugout now, where, the, where, the, where the, the, manage, the whole management team are sat. It's a collective communication, a conversation between them all. And then you might see Michael Carrick, you might see McKenney, you might see Mike Phelan speaking to the players. It's not, I'm the boss, I will decide everything. It's a collective, the players have bought into it, there's no doubt about it. And the biggest thing now, which I'm sure, I mean, you can say as well, is that the biggest thing you have to have as a manager is man management skills. But That's also, exactly what he's got. Modern, modern leadership is about being able to delegate responsibly mm. and not feel that your voice has to be the yeah. only voice. And strong Trust. people can do that. Yeah, strong people can yeah. do that. It's easy to, to say, oh, well, that manager doesn't look like they're in, in control. Mm because X, Y and Z is, is, is involved with that process, far from it. There are lots of facets to manage with a football team and I look at Manchester United and think how, how much everything has changed in just 17 games and, it, and all it involved was returning to the DNA of old mm -hmm. and, and he's been wise enough to tap into everything that that football club's about, including the most successful manager in its history. And, and make that an integral part, albeit from a grandfather sort of role. Mm. To, th to see Sir Alex in the dressing room last night, I think it was a, a real uh, moment for Manchester United and a return to the big time. Yeah, I, I think when, when you look at United over the years, their best form of defence has more often than not been attacked. The way they go forward has, has been incredible. And don't get me wrong, but for a large majority of, of yesterday's game, they had to defend and defend in numbers. But... By and large, that's what Solskjaer's done. He said, right, OK, no problem. We, we fancy ourselves. The higher up we are at the pitch, the, the more men we're able to commit forward, then the, light, the, the likelihood is the less chance we're going to have to defend. And from, from a United fan's perspective, the enjoyment's come back at watching them. I couldn't wait yesterday to watch them. The big games they've had recently against the likes of Tottenham, Arsenal, Chelsea. Over the last couple of years, I've probably not watched them in fear, but watched them in not expecting to get much. Now I'm watching and thinking to myself, counter-attacking is going to be absolutely brilliant. Someone's going to step up to the plate and do something. And that's something that's been missing for a long time. It's been, it's been far too predictable. And I just think that Solskjaer's now brought, brought the identity back to the football club from when he was at the football club, um, got the right people involved and, and got all the players on side and enjoying the game. Including the youth setup and and those young players. Mm. And now he has a group of players who have... Champions League experience yep. that they can bring to the table and being part of a team that can get those last minute decisions, get those last second wins. When you look at, at what Gareth Southgate is trying to do, mm -hmm. England for example, this summer there's, there's going to be a, 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 some choices to make for England because there's an under-21 tournament and you yeah. have players who will have played a full season of football that might be thinking about maybe playing in the, in the Nations Cup mm. for England. What Obviously, you have to take each each player of on course. an individual yeah. basis. Yeah. But broadly speaking, is it is it worth them getting that that tournament experience? I think so, within reason, dependent on you know the season they had. You look at the, these are all all the players that are obviously eligible. You leave Deli Ali out of it. You leave Marcus Rashford. Then obviously you see the situation with Gomez, the injuries, and then you start to look at how many players, uh, how many games the players have made. But the idea, from my perspective, when I look at it, and we you look at Spain when they won the World Cup in, I think it was 2010. The next year, they won the under-21s and Martinez went and Mata went. And the biggest thing that you hear, and we've heard it so many times from, from the England squad that have gone to Euros before, gone to World Cups before, is the downtime. So all of a sudden, if you get a number of players go away for the under-21s and they have this downtime together, hopefully, the hope then is like, they did, like Germany did, like Spain did for so long, these players come through a conveyor belt. So then when they go to the World Cup, to the Euros, they've had experience of that together. And I think that was a large part of the success 
in the World Cup for the for the full squad because a lot of the players have grown up together and have spent a lot of time together. But on top of that, the big reason why Spain and Germany have done well at the senior level is the cap accumulation. So often we have taken players and fast-tracked them into the senior team. You look at the caps, say Harry Winks was three. It is much more beneficial to let them go and play in an under-21 tournament. And I'm pretty certain if Southgate and Steve Holland can pick a group that would still keep the best young players together, you know, perhaps mm. differently for Deli Alley and, and Marcus Rashford. But for the rest, I think they will try to do that because that's the next generation coming through. And if they can go and win a youth tournament collectively and learn how to do it, you have to learn how to do it at the semi-final stage, is the final stage. But you have to, that's where you learn the penalty shootout experiences. And I think that England's in a, in, a, in a strong position where that perhaps their senior team are less reliant on those under-21 players and perhaps they could go and play. That big tournament experience, though, is why what Phil Neville did with the England women's team for the game against Japan in the She Believes Cup <clears throat> was so interesting because he made seven changes, moved away from what was his uh, had been seen to be his yeah. preferred first choice starting 11 mm -hmm. and made those changes in a game in which England yeah. could win silverware. But I think if you look overall at Phil Neville's group, the vast majority of those players, so many of those players, one at the under 20 level together so they've been coming through all the way through and they're at a point where you know I think we're positioned to win a World Cup we certainly have a, a great opportunity to do so and I think knowing that he's had a lot of players come through mm. that experience means that he's he's got more depth than ever so it's easier for him to make those changes and is, but is listen, he he's looking been brave to see to how those it. those players uh, yes they've played yeah. it at youth level and come through the, the various age groups together. But is he looking to see how they respond in a situation where the senior squad is in the, op is in the, in the position to be able to win a trophy? Look, every time I've spoken with Phil, he values form, he values players putting it in week in, week out, and he will know that he doesn't want players to get complacent and, 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 and stop doing what they're doing waiting for June. They have to keep producing. And I think when he picked a team to go out against Japan, Look, to be honest, I think both teams played very different teams than they will do come the June fixture. But it's, it bodes well for England that we can put out another group, be 3 nil up in the first half and, and a lot of young players get exposure. I think one of the big things as well, he spoke about the, the men's football and the women's football as in terms of the younger players coming through. And you know, like you were just saying about, I think the England women's under 20s, they just had the best finish in the World Cup as well. I think they finished third. Mm. So, you know, there's plenty of confidence then to then bring players through. And that's, that's what you need. And that's what, that's what England in particular, the men's team, they've missed for so long. They've had this group of players and there's been nothing below them, but we're starting to see now this, this conveyor belt of players being able to come through because I, I believe at the age of 21 is a, it has been a big problem. So many players have, have stagnated, have bottlenecked, been stuck in under-23 football, whereas now we're starting to see a process where players are getting opportunities and the first-team players are then getting opportunities to play, for, to play for the national team. Now, they may not be regulars in their first team. They may actually be playing in the championship, but Gareth Southgate isn't bothered about that. He looks at it and says, right, OK, this is going to be a great experience for them. And, you know, I, I've got to say that everything looks, looks in really good hands in and, and, and both sets for the women's football and the men's football. Yeah.